So you want to know how driving a tank feels like? <laughs> I can tell you something about that. Imagine driving an iron suitcase for an open field. No enemy in sight and nothing to be worried about. At least, everyone seems to think so. But deep down, you know that's not true. You open up the commander's hatch to scan your immediate surroundings for hints of an enemy tank being present. That was the sound of your platoon mate dying. In a puff of smoke nearby, you see the outline of an enemy tank slowly coming to life. With your gun pointed in its direction, you have a clear shot. All it takes is a click. A click to end their life and a click to avenge your fallen comrade. Well, you do it. Well, you fire. Of course you will. I've been in that situation many times. I know what happens next. But would you want to experience it as well? Driving an iron behemoth over a historical battlefield that once had great heroes fighting over it? If you said yes, then don't play this game. It fucking sucks. Hello guys, my name is Kimonek and I welcome you to my incredibly late review of World of Tanks. A game which I have played for over 7 years and yet for some unknown reason still haven't made a review about. Hey, don't look at me like that. I was lazy. Either way, World of Tanks is an MMO tank shooting game released by Wargaming in the year 2010. At the time, there were so few tank-oriented games out there that the closest thing World of Tanks had to rival was Tanky Online. Yes, really. Most multiplayer games at the time featuring tanks used them only as an optional mechanic you could use if you wanted to play the game in a bit of a different way. So World of Tanks focusing purely on tank versus tank combat attracted many tank lovers which made the game insanely popular in a matter of months. But it wasn't long before other companies realized the lack of tank games on the market and started making games of their own. This way the first two significant rivals of World of Tanks were born. The War Thunder and the Armored Warfare. War Thunder revolutionized the game genre by removing hit points from tanks and replacing them with a much more realistic damage model. While Mel.ru, the developer of Armored Warfare, said that the best I can do is free and made the game into a World of Tanks clone with modern tanks. Let's just say that people didn't like it. But the War Thunder thrived, so much so that it became a real threat to World of Tanks. The response to this was actually quite predictable. After seeing this, the developers of both games made it clear that they don't want people to be fighting over which game is better and focus on two different things to make their games more unique. World of Tanks tried to make a hole into the esports scene by becoming more competitive and World Thunder focused on to becoming a realistic tank simulator. After that, not much happened historically so let's get to the game itself. World of Tanks is a game where you play with tanks, destroy tanks and research new tanks that you never knew existed. Probably because they actually didn't and Wargaming ended then just for the sake of having more tanks to add. Hey, but at least they are adding something. Sometimes I wish they didn't. The tanks are sorted into 10 different tiers depending on how strong they are. Stronger tank, hard tier, simple as that. So no, no reenacting of World War II scenarios by shoving 50 T-34s up the Tiger's backside. Wait what? You can still meet a Tiger in T-34 though. It may not be balanced, but that didn't stop wargaming. The game has something called plus minus two matchmaking, which means that in a match you can meet people that are up to two tiers higher or lower than you. Now before you say anything about how unfair it is, because it clearly is, let me say two things. Firstly, it used to be much worse. And secondarily, I got to know most of the tanks I know now thanks to this very system. So it can't be that bad, I suppose. Actually, I think that this is the reason why Wargaming still keeps it in the game. Having to face some higher tier tanks every once in a while forces you to learn their weak spots. Sure, you will learn it the hard way, but when you will join their tier and will have to face them in every match, you'll know how to deal with them. Jotaro. Dio. There are five classes of tanks in the game, each made to do something different. 
Light tanks are the fastest of the bunch, sacrificing their survivability for increased mobility. Now, I know what a lot of you thought waiting for so light tanks. Oh, they are like the assassins of this game. I'm gonna play them and kill stuff. <laughs> no, don't do that. Their guns got so little penetration that they might straight up deal blunt damage. They are also supports and their role is not to kill the enemy, but to get them killed. Light tanks can do this by either detracting the enemies in front of their team, spotting them, or just by generally annoying them. Light tanks use their high mobility to get into favorable positions at the start of battle and then to support their allies. Medium tanks are like the chads of this game. No matter what you think your tank is good at, the superior mass rates of chads is better at everything else. Armor, they got more of it. Meh. Firepower, you got it. Mobility, real. They have everything your heart desires, and they have more of it than any other tank that is not focused on it. But if you meet a tank that is in an advantageous position, such as a hold down heavy tank, uh, yeah, good luck getting them out of there. Speaking of heavy tanks, heavy tanks are the biggest, thickest boys of the battlefield, boasting so much armor that you can just pack your rounds and start to run. Or just double tap the two key because we all know that that's the best way of dealing with them. Heavy tanks have a lot of firepower as well as a ton of armor, but they're facing a big issue. Emphasis on that big, because it's not exactly easy to hide when you're the size of an average family house. They also have virtually no camo, so they are spotted 24-7. The combination of these two means that you must go into towns, otherwise they'll end up as a target practice for the entire enemy team. Do you know how is the useless metal around the gun called? Not a tank destroyer. The tank destroyers are basically just guns on wheels. They get the highest alpha damage, highest DPM, highest penetration, highest anything you can think about that makes a tank deal more damage. But they are lacking everything else. Their armor is only mediocre, their mobility is meh. Hell, most of them don't even have a turret. They can just wiggle their gun a bit to the sides. However, if they position themselves far away from the battlefield, they make for really good snipers. Lastly, the SPGs. The SPGs are, hopefully a Russian badger won't hit me for using his phrase, but they are the point and click adventure games. The artilleries get access to something called artillery view, which is a top down view of the battlefield in which you can hit almost anything, anywhere on the map. The way this works is through bullet drop. The bullet drop on most tanks is so small that you can barely even notice it on the camera. However, the artilleries use it to loop their shells over buildings and hills. Now, this might sound cool and all, but I still wouldn't recommend you to play the artilleries. It's a pain to both play them and play against them. If you are playing them, you are going to miss most of your shots because it takes a couple of seconds for the shells to land. But if you are playing against them, it just feels infuriating to get hit by something that you cannot hit back. So do us all a favor and just don't play them. Please, I'm begging you. There are also 11 different nations in the game for you to play, with new ones being added every year. Each of these nations offers a unique playstyle, which I would talk about, but I think that would make this video look like one of those terms of service agreements where you're just waiting for it agreed to pop up so we can finally skip it. So I'll skip it for you. Speaking of skipping something, we're 8 minutes into the video and I still haven't talked about how this game actually works, so let's get to that right now. Most matches are 15 versus 15 and have two main objectives. You can either defeat all enemy players or capture the enemy base. While completing either one of them wins you the game, defeating all enemy players should come as a priority. It grants you better rewards and it is easier to complete. However, in case that the enemy tries to play hide and seek with you, you can pressure the enemy cap circle to make them come at you. After the end of the match, you'll be rewarded with some experience points and credits to spend. The experience points can be used to research new tanks, while the credits can be used to buy new tanks. Additionally, you're not exactly driving your tanks for free and you have to actually pay for ammunition and repair costs after every single battle. This cost is pretty negligible at first, but oh boy, does it get higher as you progress in the game. In fact, around the tier 8, the resupply costs can get so high that you will actually lose money each battle. To counteract this, you'll be forced to play lower tier tanks, despite no longer having anything to research from them. There's also the option to buy a tier 8 premium, but... Uh, yeah. Pay to win! <coughs> Pay to win... 
Oh, and I almost forgot. You also have crew in this game, which affects the performance of your tank. The harder they're experienced, the harder boost they provide. You can train them by simply playing the game, or if you have a premium tank or a tank with an elite status, you can always check this box to transfer all experience earned on that tank from that point to your crew. No, nope, then anyone actually buys the free experience this way. But now to the final question. Should you play this game? Well, I guess. Like, the game is really nice. The gameplay, the graphics, the soundtrack are all amazing, and the game is really fun to play. Even the grind is pretty acceptable after I added those blueprints and missions to earn credits from. Sure, finding a group of people to play with can be a bit of a pain, but it's not impossible. And after you find one, an entire new world of clans will open up to you. But there is still one little reason why I think you still might not want to play this game. The Soviets. Alright, one obligatory Soviet buy joke later. Now to the real reason. The real reason why I think you might not want to play this game is the community. This game has one of the most toxic, most salty, most addicted to anime, just kidding, I love anime, communities I've ever seen. And as a person who can qualify himself as the salt, I truly mean it. I've never seen a community as toxic as the World of Tanks community. And the first rule of Minecraft is to never dig straight down, and the first rule of League of Legends is to never chase Singe. The first rule of World of Tanks is to always blame it on someone else. Sure, there are some good people playing this game as well, obviously, but there are just so many toxic people that you can't see them. But I can sort of understand the toxicity in this game. To me, every time I got hit, it felt like a slap on that one little cousin at the family gathering. I can't hit them back, I can't shove them, I can't tell them anything, because if I ever do, everyone will just look at me like I'm some sort of a spawn of Satan or something. Over the years I learned to control it, but even now I would be lying if I said that I don't get a bit mad whenever someone shoots me or an ally moves in front of my shot. The game is simply not something you play to relax after a long day at work. It's kinda like Dark Souls. You get mad, you get annoyed, you get triggered and yet you still play the game because for some reason you enjoy it. Also, if you get a group of friends to play it with, it's a lot of fun as well. So if you get two or more friends, I would definitely recommend it to you. Either way, this is gonna be the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it, because this video was sort of a test of how I wanna make videos in the future. I've reworked the script at, at the very least five times over, and I'm still not fully alright with it, because, you know, I kinda try to remove all of the shit talking and try to cut down on the jokes, because they were kinda getting in the way for the past couple of months, and was kinda annoying me actually. So I try to make a video with as little jokes as is possible and then maybe re-add them in the future video. Still, as I already said, this video is merely a test. I wouldn't recommend it to any new fan of my channel as a, like, go and watch this video. But if you watched it, I'm still happy. I'm still happy and I definitely hope you enjoyed because if you did, it means that you're gonna be enjoying my future videos as well. Anyway, this is gonna be the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Bye.